Okay, so one of the questions I get is how well does this build do against bosses? So I wanted to try Elias here. This is the pinnacle to world tier four. I'm at 57, so it's a 13 level punch up. I know it's a little overkill. Really, we only really care about a 10 level punch up now with the new leveling settings when it comes to experience gain. And the big thing about this build is I want something that feels good, can punch up consistently because that's the new way that they're going to be encouraging to level up experience. And then lastly, does it is it relatively fast? If I'm doing all this, but I have to be super careful, it's pointless. So I wanted to see just how good it is against something like this with a 13 level punch up. I know it's a little overkill, but at the same time, I figured it would be a good proof of concept here and it ended up working out. So we were able to solo this, beat Elias here. I just wanted to show the kill and then we'll have other clips to show as well. Okay, so we got him. And this wasn't like a first attempt. I died like five or six times doing this, but it, it did happen. Okay, so then here is gonna be World Tier 4. This is in a new malignant tunnel. Notice how they're level 75 plus here at the top. And how does it do here? This is me pulling in a pack of mobs. I wanted to see if it's actually painful, if it's even pointless to do this this early. And it turns out it's actually killing them quite quickly, which I think is pretty dope because this is going to be able to get us ancestral gear significantly faster. And it's going to unlock the new seasonal mechanic as fast as possible because some of those malignant hearts are gated by world tier four. So this is me killing it again for the heart. You'll notice that we won't be able to kill them within the initial stun window. There is aspects that I don't have that will help with this. And then there's also aspects that will help. Notice, notice how um, this symbol here that's unstoppable and then there's also aspects that will help us do more damage to unstoppable but that one's kind of more optional if you end up finding it because a lot of this is not going to be consistent like we're not going to be able to get every aspect we want as we're leveling up so it's unrealistic to expect we're going to have the full build so i think that's a pretty good proof of concept here let's get into the build we have quite a few things to cover all of it will be time stamped we have aspects itemization malignant hearts skill tree and paragon board the ones that I've chose here, the ones I will choose in the future, all of it will be in a build planner down below. But the important thing is to understand the concepts, not to just copy the build. So let's start with itemization. Here's the main things that I look for when it comes to this. Item power really matters when it comes to our two-handers and the entire purpose of the build is gonna come down to having a one-handed mace. We absolutely need to have a one-handed mace here because these two things in wallop, but mainly concussion. This is how we get our stagger bar on the bosses. This is how we get consistent stuns that don't necessarily mean we need to rely on ground stomp. So just keep that in mind. If there's anything to take from this, you need to have a one-handed mace. And ideally, you know, as I'm uh, leveling, I got pretty lucky and got a pretty high item power level, all things considered, version of this. The stats that I care about when it comes to our weapons is it's not going to be critical strike damage. When we're leveling, that is kind of a lesser priority because critical striking is just not going to be that common. We're going to be looking for strength, all stat, vulnerable damage, and then the typical additive stuff such as damage to stunned, damage to close, damage to core. Those things are gonna be really impactful when it comes to these pieces of gear as we go through, as you can see on my ax here. And I don't really, even really care if I got a pole arm, if I got an ax, if I got a two-hander, two-handed sword. All those things are nice bonuses, but the thing that matters is having these main things when it comes to the weapons. When it comes to the gear, these are gonna be the typical things that we're gonna be looking for. Just keep in mind on rings, you cannot find resource generation. It's just not possible until world tier four. So when it comes to the rings, we're gonna be caring about flat life. 199 maximum life is, is such a big portion of my actual life. Flat life is really important when it comes to survivability. The boots and the neck piece, we're gonna be looking for fury cost reduction. I got really lucky with this piece because it was a 700 that dropped and I was able to roll it up. Thresholds are a really important concept to understand. I'll talk about some of the actual gearing tips here in a moment, but fury cost reduction is really impactful. You can find it on your boots and on your neck pieces. On the gloves, I think gloves are gonna be something that's really important. You can get your core skill, so we got the ranks to double swing. You can get critical strike chance here. These are really important things to consider. And then when it comes to your legs and chest, these are gonna be your damage reduction things if you can find them. In these situations, it doesn't need to be that important to find this, but I got a pretty lucky uh, pants here when it comes to damage reduction injured, damage reduction close, damage reduction bleeding. I think that's really good. And on the chest, it's okay to have a little damage with dual wield weapons. It doesn't need to be perfect here. I'm not trying to have this fully optimized mid-max thing. It's just not gonna be realistic when it comes to this, but ideally, these are the things we're gonna be trying to target, like total armor percentage, cooldown reduction on the, on the chest piece. This is where you can find it. You can find cooldown reduction here, and you can find cooldown reduction on the necklace. When you start to understand these things, what we're gonna be able to leverage. 
Now let me give you a couple actionable tools to be able to improve your chances of finding these things. Okay, so real quick, there's a concept called priority affixes and the big ones to keep in mind. So they added the mechanic where forgotten souls can be dropped by just salvaging legendary pieces of gear. So you don't need to do hell ties to be able to get these. So it's really important that you actually use your potential roles on another affix intelligently. And the way you can actually really use this to your favor are gonna be on two important gear types. One is gonna be weapons and one is gonna be your gloves. These are gonna be the two best ways to do it. So on the gloves, the priority affixes are, these are gonna be the most impactful. So on the gloves, the priority affixes are attack speed and critical strike chance. So you're guaranteed if you don't have, let's say this piece of gear didn't have critical strike and didn't have attack speed. You are guaranteed to, on one of those two options when you're rolling this, to be able to get critical strike chance or attack speed. Both of them would have been a win for me on here. So when you finally find a piece that has double swing or ranks to double swing, you know that if it doesn't have crit critical strike chance, you know you're going to be able to at least guarantee that or attack speed in this situation. And ideally, you would find a piece of gear that has ranks to double swing, because that's rare, attack speed, and then on anything else, you roll it, and you're guaranteed to be able to get critical strike chance there. So it's really easy to find super impactful gloves for whatever build you're going for. Then when it comes to weapons, the only priority affix is your main stat. So in the case of a barbarian, my main stat is strength. So if you find a good piece of gear that does not have a strength roll, that is ideal, because the, you mean, obviously ideal would be to find the perfect GG four affix thing that has everything you would want, but I realistically, that's not going to happen. You're going to find maybe two that you like and one that's okay and one you don't like at all. So the one you're going to want to roll is if you find a piece of gear that's good, but it doesn't, it's missing strength, you know you're good because you're guaranteed to be able to get that strength. Notice how I did that here. I got strength here because I knew I was going to get it. And then I didn't need to roll it here because this one was actually pretty solid. And then over here, I knew I needed strength and, or I knew I was going to get strength. So I rolled strength here. It just takes one roll. So I was able to roll this and roll this, know that it only took one roll and I guaranteed those things. And up here, I got lucky. I hit the coin flip and I was able to roll critical strike chance. So I was able to, with that knowledge, I was able to do that and it saves so many resources. Okay. So next is going to be the aspects. I'm going to be talking about these from the perspective of try to get as many of these as possible. Obviously we're going to be leveling, so we're not going to be able to guarantee these and it shouldn't be expected that this build is going to be contingent upon you getting these things. Some of the most impactful ones, for example, disobedience. This is something that you could find in the codex just by doing a dungeon and then it's going to be in the codex. And I was using the min roll version to be able to punch up and be able to beat the pinnacle world tier four boss. So that is one thing that I think is really important about this build is that it needs to be flexible like that. That being said, I would see by far the most important affix is going to be accelerating. This is going to be one that really accelerates, for lack of a better term, your damage because it just synergizes so well with double swing. This is one of those big affixes that is going to be super noticeable for your actual damage in the feel of the build. If you're on the lookout for any affix, this is going to be the one to look out for and I highly recommend putting it on a two-hander so you get a bigger benefit from it. So this is gonna be the main one. And then when it comes to survivability, I think a couple impactful ones that are luckily also in the codex are going to be this one, where basic skills grant 20% damage reduction for two seconds. In this case scenario, if you find a better one, it can go up to six seconds. This is another optional one that I think is good if you're trying to punch up into content that is difficult you could respec off Rallying Cry into Iron Skin. With this, you would be able to gain the Unstoppable. You're getting a shield. You're getting more healing. This is another option. I didn't go with that, but if I kept failing against Elias, I was going to consider it. And then here's another one that I think is really good too, especially when leveling. This kind of falls off later on. It's going to be damaging an elite enemy grants you a barrier absorbing up to, in my case, 2,273 damage for 10 seconds. This effect can only happen once every 30 seconds. But look at my health. It's just, it's fully, it's, it's bigger than my health bar with this. So, and it could be exceed my health bar by about 50%. So I think this is something that scales super well early, potentially falls off later. I never was taking this on my Eternal Realm character. Uh, it just didn't seem to be that impactful compared to other things, but especially when leveling, I think this is really good for survivability. If you're seeing the footage of the build, I did have a Dust Devil Casting double swing twice within two seconds creates a Dust Devil dealing 570 damage. I've just never used Dust Devil before and I thought it was fun to try it, so I gave it a shot. And it did okay damage. It's not nothing crazy. I don't think this is the way to go. Maybe like Berserk Ripping or there's there's so many better options potentially, 
in your glove spot, but I thought it was fun to try something that I've never done before, so that's why I had that. And then now let's talk about some of the other aspects that I wish I had, but I couldn't afford with resources or just didn't want to waste the aspect while leveling. So we have this one, Aspect of Retribution. I think this is going to make the build feel so much better from a consistency perspective. Distant enemies have an 8% chance to be stunned for two seconds when they hit you. You deal up to 20% multiplicative increased damage to stunned enemies. I believe this just got nerfed in the recent patch. I don't really care about the damage of it. I care about the extra survivability of having the 8% chance of distant enemies getting stunned and just more consistent stun chances is always nice when it comes to this build because everything is synergizing off that. And then if a distant enemy gets stunned, I can see that, pull them in with Steel Grasp, and now I have a activator for that double swing. So it's another. it just synergizes with the build very well. And then another one too is gonna be smiting. I absolutely love this aspect, it's really good. I think it's good enough to the point where you could put it on a two-hander, especially early if you find one because crit rate is so hard to come by and how important it is to get the increased duration of your crowd control abilities. Up to a 20% chance to increase critical strike chance against enemies, uh, injured enemies. And while you're healthy, you gain the increased crowd control duration. You really notice this. I, I had this on a ring and I liked it a ton, but I had to get rid of it for other malignant heart stuff. And it was just a really low rolled ring. So that's why I got rid of it. And a couple other ones that I think would be good, but I didn't get a chance to use. Edge Masters, while level, like didn't get a chance to use while leveling. I've done this build on the Eternal Realm up to 100. So I've, I've used all these there. They're good, but when leveling, I wanted to feel it while leveling. And Edge Masters, I didn't get to use, but it, this would be great. And then also Limitless Rage, I think would be great too. The ones that I kind of shy away from, in my opinion, are gonna be the auto attack ones because you can't snapshot like Whirlwind. So I think those auto attack affixes take too long to ramp up and you're constantly having to auto attack instead of doing what you're supposed to be doing, which is just double swinging as much as possible. So even though I put expected on this, I felt like it wasn't that good. This one would probably feel okay, which is gonna be basic skills gain 25% attack speed. This would only be something to increase your fury generation. I don't think it's worth ever imprinting this. If you just happen to find this on a piece of gear, would probably be pretty good. And then one that I really did like was gonna be inner calm. Cause you're constantly sitting there, you're stunned, you're just standing there and you couldn't even just shift click double swing and you're gonna be standing still, doing increased damage is always really good. So I think those are the really impactful ones that I used a ton or wish I had while leveling. So there's actually a lot of aspects in the seasonal journey that I think are worth highlighting here. So we got Bold Chieftain's Aspect. So if you guys played the Atonal Realm, you'll understand just how rare this one is. Them giving us a min roll temporarily at least for the season I think is a really cool move by them because of just how rare it was. It was just a major issue, so at least we can guarantee this aspect, especially because Barbarian's unfortunately in a spot where I believe every single build took this. So you double down on the rarity of it, plus everyone needing it, it should be an aspect, and they put it in. So that you could find that here. Big move by Blizzard there, I think that's good. Ideally, it just wouldn't be that rare, but whatever. And the one that I think is really good, the one that I was most excited about when I saw the patch notes, was Aspect of Audacity. Unfortunately, it's so far into the seasonal journey that we're not gonna be able to use it on our leveling portion of this, unless you're leveling up another character, where when you have at least five close enemies, stun them for two seconds. This can only occur once every 20 seconds, but this would be so good on our build because we're gonna be pulling people in. We're gonna have five people around us a ton. So this is gonna guarantee those stuns where we're gonna able to basically have another version of Ground Stomp when we still grasp them in. So we have Ground Stomp, that's on cooldown, pull them in, that's another Ground Stomp if you're actually being able to get five enemies there. And I wanted to try this to see just how quickly it comes out, if there's a delay there, but if it's the second the five come in and then they get stunned immediately, that's gonna be so big for this build. Unfortunately, comes way down the line here on the seasonal journey, so hopefully you get lucky and you guys pull it on a piece of gear. I have not gotten that lucky, but I will be excited to try it out hopefully here soon. And then also here's a tip on when it comes to imprinting stuff on how expensive it can become for your rings is it is far cheaper to build imprint stuff on your gear here than it would be on your rings and this would be reasonably priced in my opinion five of these abstruse sigils to be able to imprint this on there and then also 12 of these veiled crystals i don't think that's anything crazy that's for something in the codex let's say i take something that i actually pulled myself and would be really impactful so we get offensive aspect of retribution here this would be amazing. This fits the build perfectly, but I couldn't use it because look at how expensive this is. 16. <laughs> Why does it take 16 of these when leveling 
on a, it's not even like this item power is in that higher threshold. Like if this was like 725 or something like that, it's just weird that it's this expensive, but just, I'm not here to complain about that. It's just more to show you guys that this is something to consider that it's going to be very difficult to find a good aspect on a ring because even if you do have that aspect and you're willing to imprint onto it, it is going to be very expensive to do so. Okay, let's talk about the Malignant Hearts. These are the ones that I've been using mainly. I think this one's amazing. Up to 20% of incoming damage is instead suppressed. When you use a defensive move, in the case of a Barbarian, all suppressed damage is amplified by 250% and explodes, dealing up to X amount of damage. This is going to be scaling with the actual Malignant Heart here. This is amazing. Having more defensive tools is awesome, especially with the hotfix that they did where they added more armor to this. This one's really good. Ideally, we'll have more critical strike chance later on. I still like this a ton. You gain up to 70% critical strike damage, but your non-critical strikes deal anywhere from 30 to 25% less damage. So I think this is still good. Definitely increases your damage. You know, And as we gear up and get better gear, that is gonna only get better. This one's also really impactful. This is the Wrathful Heart. You have a cycling ability. Cycles through malignant bonus every 20 kills. Gain 22% attack speed on Vicious. That's my favorite one. If it just stayed there, I'd be totally fine with that. Devious is pretty solid. Core and basic skills have a 17% chance to fully restore your primary resource. That has come up clutch a few times. And then Brutal is surprisingly good, where every 19 seconds you gain a barrier absorbing 315 damage. You look at my health, 2200. 300 is a sizable portion of that, especially when you compare in addition to this aspect here. This is covering my entire health, whereas this is a nice little bonus. Plus the attack speed is going to synergize with gaining fury with your auto attacks and also doing damage with your double swing, procking more stuns potentially. So very good heart there. A couple other options I tried. I think this one's good right here, this cage of focus rage where you're, get, you're using Fury and then you're guaranteeing the critical strike chance. This is definitely going to improve the consistency of the build. You're also dumping a lot of Fury with this build. So this is a totally valid option that I think is good. We also have this one. I'm not the biggest fan of this one because critical strikes electrically charge enemies for three seconds, causing them, causing lightning to arc between them. So it, I think this is not for this build because they're not surviving. If we're doing a lot of AOE and those people are not dying immediately, then maybe this would be good but we're killing them immediately. They're not getting a chance to arc out and do that damage. If we're doing like an upheaval build or some kind of build where we're doing damage and then they're slowly taking down or you're doing a lot of AOE damage, but you're focusing down a particular point of it. So those people on the edges that got hit by it are arcing around, potentially very good. This one was pretty lackluster. I was thinking that fury cost issues would be something that this would potentially mitigate because we're already surviving so well but it still just felt clunky. I, I didn't like this one. It didn't really improve the feel of the build at all. I didn't like it. Some of the blue ones, immune, don't really care. I kind of want to try this to see if you, if like let's say a situation that would one shot me would only drop me down to 20%. I haven't tested this one enough. Maybe this will be good in situations like Uber Lilith, but didn't really try it, didn't seem good. And then also this one didn't seem good either. While below X amount of life, you receive more healing from all sources, like who cares? This was just clearly better than both of them. Like it's not even close in my opinion. And then another one that I'm not using that I liked a ton that I would probably be using over this one or in place of this one, this. So cage hard of punishing speed, your skills have a X percent chance to knock down all enemies for 1.25 seconds when the skills attack speed is higher than either 35 to 20%. So this is like perfect, basically made for this build, it feels like, because first of all, double swing actually procs off like this portion of it. The enhanced double swing procs off knockdown enemies. And we're trying to get enough attack speed. So it's you're knocking people down constantly. It's a very good feeling Wrathful Heart for this build. And probably going to be the more consistent option than something like this. Especially now. If I had a ring that was a devious ring. I would probably use that and happily use that over just the increased damage. Because the thing that really matters. Damage is fine. What, what matters is the activations. The activations of the knockdowns. The activations of the stuns. And so having another way of doing that is really good. Auto attacks. There's two different ones I like to go. You saw in the Elias kill, I ended up going for Combat Frenzy here, but for the most part, I like Lunging Strike. Main reason why is we're going to be able to have a two-handed bludgeoning weapon here, and we'll see later why that is so good. With Frenzy, you're stuck with two one-handers, so you have two one-handers on Frenzy, and then you also have two one-handers on Double Swing, so you don't get the benefits of the abilities of swapping weapons, whereas you would on Lunging Strike here. And also, just Lunging Strike feels good because you get that dash, which I really like early. 
And then we're gonna come down here to the enhanced double swing vulnerable. This is the whole point of the build is gonna be if double swing damages a stunned or knocked down enemy, gain 25 fury. Fury generation is very difficult when leveling. That is why this is so important, especially in a leveling build. And then we're gonna be sending quite consistently. And then we also have vulnerable, which is very difficult to proc when leveling. There's not many ways to guarantee vulnerable like double swing can early. You need the exploit glyph, you know, and plus fury generation issues. So this covers the two big issues when it comes to the barbarian class when leveling is fury generation issues and vulnerable proccing issues. So then we have one point here before we can go. There's a couple things you can do. You can e either come up here for the lunging strike grants berserking for 1.5 seconds when critical striking. I think that's kind of a waste because critical strike is something that's really hard to rely on early. You could come here, basic skills generate more fury, or you could just get one point into double swing. That's usually what I do. And then the, so the order of this portion doesn't matter too much. What matters is just getting these things eventually. We want rallying cry, we want challenging shout, and we want ground stomp. When it comes to the effects, I don't really care about the other ones down here. Maybe you can argue going this later, but I think the important ones for your build are gonna be unstoppable for sure. Then I would probably come up and get the ground stomp and the 40 fury generation. I think that's really important. Then come over here for the extra resource generation. Very good. And then top priority is gonna be getting steel grasp. It's really gonna pull the build together because we're gonna be able to get vulnerable and we're gonna be able to get berserking. So we need three points. I would say just go here and get the healing. Just get it now, it's easier. You could go all into movement speed if you wanna go fast. And then I think later down the line, we're really gonna want this. Prolific Fury is also really good for the extra Fury generation while berserking. I think that's a good option as well. So instead of going here, you could do something like this, or instead of this, what you could end up doing is something like this if you really wanted to. I think there's a lot of potential options. You could also just go all in on double swing. That is also another option. So all of those things I think are totally valid. We finally get to this portion. Immediately you wanna take three points into Steel Grasp. I think that's really good. Then we need four to get down here because we really want Concussion. The absolute first chance you can get this, you're gonna to wanna to get this. So with those four points, I think the best use of those is gonna be one point to Pit Fighter to get the increased damage to close enemies and the distant damage reduction, but then to get three points here because Critical Strike Chance is so valuable and we're gonna be, the whole point of the build is to stun. So we're gonna have immobilized stun or slowed enemies, 9% increased chance of critically strike, really important. Now we have enough points, we're gonna go one into wallop and three into concussion. We need six to go here, we're probably gonna go walking arsenal. I've tried unbridled rage, it just feels clunky. It's just not good until way later. Walking arsenal is the move in my opinion. It feels way better because it also snowballs better with concussion with the additional attack speed. We're not gonna be taking any of these alts. None of these, we're just trying to improve double swing. That's all we care about. We don't have room on our bar to do anything else. Another thing to consider is Fortify. I've tried this. I think it's really difficult to be consistently fortified without additional aspects or the Paragon board. In a leveling build, it's hard to rely on something like this when you are not guaranteed to be able to get those aspects. So I'm just gonna dodge Fortify entirely. Filling out the rest of the build is not too important on the direction you go. The main thing here was Concussion. 30% lucky hit chance to stun enemies for three seconds and a 45% chance when using two-handed bludgeoning weapons. This is important because we're gonna be attacking with a one-handed mace so often, and a two-handed mace when it comes to our, or a two-handed bludgeoning weapon when it comes to our auto attack. So we're consistently having a chance to proc this ability. So this is gonna be stunning, which is going to further synergize with our double swing, but also against bosses, this is how you can really ramp up your stagger chance because you're combining this with ground stomp and your additional attack speed, you're gonna be able to pretty consistently stagger enemies, and then when they're staggered, that counts as a immobilize for the fury generation here, so you can just literally hold down the button, do enhanced double swing on the boss to be able to kill them pretty fast. So that is why this is probably the most important passive on the entire build. The rest of it is just filling stuff out. I like going wall up for the extra damage, then I like to go on the healing spree. We go here, we're gonna be punching up quite a bit. Guttural yell is a really good way to gain extra survivability here. This is a really good DR. We're gonna be filling out our double swing as well. I think this is really good. We're gonna to want to have the increased fury generation. We're also gonna to want to have more healing. And when we, each time we swap weapons, we're gonna gain fury. By having all of these things, especially without the optimized gear to be able to have fury cost reduction on the boots and on the necklace, and then also the resource generation on the rings, not having those things, being able to take these is really important having as many ways to be able to generate fury makes the build just feel so much better. And then we're gonna go here for finish out the close 
damage. This is basically the, the full build when it comes to leveling. At this point, you're gonna go in potentially in a different direction, whatever. These are gonna be the key points to emphasize. Okay, so when it comes to the Paragon board, I think this is by far the most objective portion of this build because leveling build, and then also based on what you actually pull. So even if there's an objective best thing, doesn't necessarily mean that's gonna be the case because you could pull different glyphs and you're kind of stuck with the glyphs that you have. The two main ones that I'm gonna be looking for on the first one, on this first board here, is gonna be dexterity based ones. For example, I went with Wrath, but if I happen to have pulled Territorial, I think this is better. Critical Strike damage is obviously a very good stat, but early Critical Strike chance is not that high. So then I want just the additive stats of something like Territorial first, that is gonna be good. And then also the survivability of the 10% damage reduction against close enemies, I think it's also good as well. So Territorial is ideal and Wrath would be a close second. Another one you can consider would be Exploit. I think this is the worst out of the three because the main benefit of this build is being able to guarantee vulnerable. You have Steel Grasp doing it, you have Double Swing doing it. So this additional bonus is pretty much worthless, especially early. Yes, you would eventually take this because you want that additional vulnerable damage maybe down the line, but you wouldn't do this on a, if you only had one board option or one or two board options. So the next, let's talk about the actual board I would take and then what I would put into that board. And mainly we're gonna be focusing on a strength one, but let's talk about the boards I would choose. And I think there's really only two good options when it comes to this second board. First one is gonna be Decimator here. This is the good one. You get a ton of vulnerable damage here. Look at all this. You get 20% vulnerable damage plus 10 strength, 10% vulnerable plus 100 armor. You're also getting the two-handed slashing, don't really care about that, but just 10% vulnerable damage might even be worth it just for that. So let's go through here and take a look. We don't really care about this. Two-handed slashing weapons attacks have a 8% chance to make enemies vulnerable. We're not even using two-handed slashing, but we are using moves that are guaranteeing vulnerable. So vulnerable damage is amazing for us. Even this is something I would consider, but let's actually rotate it. I think just going to the node as soon as possible is gonna be the move. And then this is gonna be a good opportunity to use a strength node that is gonna boost the magic nodes here for the additional vulnerable damage and then also the additional damage reduction from vulnerable enemies. So we have all of this that I think is gonna be super sick here in a moment. So we can go up through here. I'd probably come up through, you know, it doesn't really matter too much. We're just gonna be going here. We're trying to dodge as much intelligence as possible if it is an option, which looks like it is. And then also look at how cheap it is to be able to refund these only 385 gold. So you could just come through here and it's not the end of the world here if you wanna change things, but this is where I'm at now. But for the actual glyph socket, I think the best is going to be ambidextrous. So you have the 25% bonus and it's gonna go up quite a bit when you actually level it, but you get the, you deal 8% multiplicative increased damage while wielding one-handed weapons. We are wielding one-handed weapons and we're gonna be able to get the bonuses to vulnerable here. So that's one option. And then I don't know how far you guys wanna go in the board, what you consider leveling. I'm gonna go two boards because it gets to the point where this is like a mid game build. It's not actually a leveling build anymore. The other one I was thinking is flawless technique. So you get the armor right there, but you get a ton of one handed damage with one handed weapons here. You get a little bit of attack speed, that's good. And then you also get critical strike damage, 30%. That's a really high number, 30%. That rare node is actually giving me more than my wrath is right now at level 11 to really put in perspective how much that is giving you. You know, you're gonna be able to get 30% critical strike damage with one handed weapons here. And then these are gonna get boosted. So the 7.5% critical strike damage with one-handed weapons, that's gonna get boosted by ambidextrous. Critical strike damage here, that's gonna get boosted. That's also gonna get boosted. So probably be the second one I go. If I go first into Decimator, second into Flawless Technique, you know, that's gonna be a pretty solid build to start off with as you're leveling through. Then everything kind of changes once you start to really level up. But those are two really impactful boosts to make your character really strong. All right guys, well that's gonna do it for the build here. Hopefully it was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. I'm willing to answer every single question that you throw my way down there. And as an outro, I figured I would show you guys my deaths against Elias on the pinnacle, and then also the final run here that actually was successful. So with that guys, I'm out of here. You have a good one, peace.